Hi everybody, it's still January 11, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this article along to me. AT&T charges North Bay Tubbs fire survivors for damaged equipment. Those cable boxes. 500. Nearly $500. And guess what? They lifted it right out of people's accounts. Wow. Think about that cashless society. A society that is corporate fascism. Ooh, you don't have the money to pay. Fine. They take it right out of your account. This is a very scary uh, reality that we have manifested here. Never should they have deducted money from someone's bank account without knowledge. Yeah, but that's corporate fascism. They do whatever the hell they want to do. These are fire survivors who lost everything. And the cable boxes, AT&T, hey, I want my money. I'm going to just take it out of people's accounts. How sick is this country? How unbelievably sick is this country? And don't tell me that Americans are not involved in this nightmare that we have created. Of course, Americans work at AT&T. The customers are, well, serviced by those representatives at AT&T. Seventeen dead. Okay, seventeen dead. More than four hundred homes damaged. Sixty-five destroyed completely. Thirty square miles of mud, mud, mud in California. It is. It's really truly. When you know that all of this is deliberate, this is really hard to take. I want to um, tell you about Deborah Tavares' new interview, which was, I guess, two days ago now. Um, she imparting more information. Very, very important. But here, in this interview, she lives in the Northern California area. Um, Sonoma County, doesn't she? Yeah, I think so. And she talks about seeing people who are living in, I think she said, RVs parked on side streets, they having lost their homes in those fires. And Santa Rosa had declared a state of emergency, a state of emergency about a year ago, over the housing shortage and the homelessness crisis. And now after the fires, they're 5% down on housing, and 15,000 people lost their homes. Of course, the lower income neighbors, that's my phone, the lower income neighbors are, yes, of course, they're most likely to be displaced. Of course, they're going to find it very difficult to rebuild, get back on their feet. Many people will remain homeless. Before the fires, they had about 3,000 homeless people in Santa Rosa. The numbers now are going up. They're living in pop-up encampments all over the city. People are sleeping in parks. They're staying in their cars. There are still 425 people in the shelters. And yes, now winter is here. And this was uh, several months ago, these articles. I'm just reiterating that many people do not have the means anymore to recover from these quote-unquote catastrophes. Well, they are catastrophes, but they are not related to Mother Nature. They are, they are man and man's technology creating this. So Jeff Sugarman, he escaped his burning home in Santa Rosa. Then he faced the horrors of the region's housing market. A rental house nearby that had been listed for 3700 a month 
on Zillow. When he emailed about seeing it, the owner told him, ah, the price had soared. And he told the landlord that he was appalled and that it was wrong. 8,400 buildings were destroyed in that, fam in that fire yeah, up north. So the Guardian did an investigation and found that the prices right after the fire increased. Uh, the rental market. Sonoma, their rent jumped 36%. Napa, 23%. Is this outrageous? Of course it's outrageous. Are Americans part of the nightmare that we are living? Absolutely they are. Absolutely. Where do the renters go? Well, the renters are in the worst position because they had no assets. So how are they going to afford these increases? How could they possibly uh, afford these increases? Rental homes on Craigslist jump dramatically. Casually looking to move before the fire and saw a home first listed for 3200 it jumped to 8400 after the fire. These numbers are staggering. Even hard to believe. Even if you, well, consider that there might be some exaggeration there. How could landlords do this? What What is wrong with their heart and minds? I mean, can you imagine being a landlord and People losing everything in a fire. I mean, you jack up your rent because, hey, we can exploit the vulnerable. Can you imagine doing that? I can't. I can't at all. Tough choices, yes, tough choices people are having to make. Do we re rebuild fast or better? Now, these are people who actually have means to rebuild. If anything happened in your area, if you lost your home due to one of these man-made, manufactured weather events, do you have the means to then have to rent a place? And, well, it's not just Californians who are greedy. Landlords all across this country, hey, seize the opportunity. I can make more money. Do you have the means? to then pay for rent, perhaps continue to pay for your mortgage. Do you have friends and family that will help you out? Because you know what? There's a lot of people that don't. So wildfire experts are urging California officials to consider seizing the moment to strengthen regulations to get people to build and those regulations are that they have to rebuild with these fire retardant materials, which are far more costly. But here, following wildfires, urban areas tend to build up more densely. Yes, and that's exactly what they want. Those who still survive these fires I'll link below to all of these articles, but this was happening in, this is happening in Northern California. People now homeless. Southern California. Houston, still people homeless. And all of this is due to using weather as a weapon, we are at war, and it's very hard to take. More and more Americans are going down. But when you've got corporations doing this, are you kidding? Everybody should cancel their AT&T account. I mean, this is disgusting. It's so grossly immoral. And then, well, we do live in a lawless nation now with corporations just going into people's account. 
accounts and taking the money right out. That's what has manifested today. All links are below.